As far as villain goes, Mercy is working them. This whole friggin' episode. Yo, 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 you guys, it's that cartoonist back once again, and we are jumping into Supergirl Season 2, Episode 2. If you guys are digging the content, go ahead and hit me with a like, comment, and subscribe, because it means so much, and we'll jump right in. The episode opens up with a lot of people outside the White House, and on one side, you have a bunch of people who are for aliens' rights, and you have on the other side, a bunch of people who are not for it at all. And they're warring, you know, saying different things, you know, like, oh, get these roaches out of here. Rights for everybody. And they're just kind of going back and forth. And inside the White House itself, you have Supergirl talking to the president and talking about how she appreciates everything she's done for the country. And the president just states, well, you know, technically I did break the law, so I have to get out. I, I can't do this anymore. I have to step down as president and give it to my vice president, who actually is a human. All the while, a fight breaks out outside the White House and a, a flagpole falls down and, you know, Supergirl, you know, saves everybody and like, this is the time to talk. Thus, of course, actually stopping the fight. John goes back to the bar and he asks about Fiona. And apparently Fiona has not showed up for several days. Fiona was the alien from last episode who the Agent of Liberty did in. Director Danvers is questioning Otis Graves and Otis is playing dumb. He's not trying to give up any information. He has been tight about everything he gives out, but he ends up slipping up and giving Danvers a little bit of information so that she can go ahead and chase down Mercy Graves. Now, this is not before he tries to attack Danvers, and of course, that doesn't even work. Now, early in this episode, Mercy runs into a uh, Elcourt person and ends up taking old buddy down, taking his laptop, and she also comes back with an extra ingredient, kryptonite. And we're just kinda like, whoa, whoa. And she returns to the Agent of Liberty, who's waiting back at the hideout, and she has that as insurance. Now, Lena is visited by Kara, and not only do they talk about recent issues that are happening within their community, Kara is writing an article on Mercy Graves, and Lena is more than happy to help. Now, John Jones ends up visiting the DEO, and he runs into, you know, Director Danvers. And he ends up asking her for some help finding Fiona, but Brainy interrupts. John just says, you know what? Don't worry, I'll find her. I'll take care of it. You all have enough to deal with right here. At CACO, we end up finding Nina sleeping on the job. James finds her too. She ends up spazzing out for someone. Whoa, whoa, where am I? Oh gosh, sorry. Um, she runs to go get coffee. She she attempts to go get coffee for um James as well. So while at the coffee shop, she ends up running into Brinia. Now Cara and Lena are talking, and through this conversation and through the information that she's received so far, Cara ends up finding out that Lena and Mercy were actually really good friends. We all know about Lena's estranged relationship with her mother, but Mercy was kind of there to kind of help Lena become the woman she is. In addition, Mercy happened to be Lex Luthor's ex-lover. In fact, there was trouble in paradise because Lex Luthor could never quite let go of his crazy, crazy obsession with Superman, which was the problem in the first place. At the same time this is going on, Brainiac's image inducer goes haywire because the whole system is being attacked. And while he's at the pizza shop, his disguise goes off. The pizza shop is just surprised to find out he's an alien and they are ready to attack him. Of course, Brainiac's able to dodge their little assault, but he's really surprised that people he's known for a while now here on, on this, you know, in this time, are willing to attack him even knowing he's an alien. It is thanks to the quick actions of Nia standing up for him that stopped him entirely. She basically states, I am a reporter at CatCo. I'm gonna tell everybody what you guys are doing. Get this man his pizzas. And that was really cool of her to step up for Brainy like that. And then, you know, Lena and Carr are just like, yo, what's going on with the image inducers? Because this is L Corp tech. Lena is working hard to make sure that these are not being hacked. And you know, the computer that Mercy stole earlier is what's being used to hack this now. So Lena has to put in some heavy work and she's able to block out Mercy from getting the whole system. Now, Brandy and Nia ends up leaving the pizza 
parlor together. And it seems that there might be a little something, something happening between Brainy and Nia. John goes to Fiona's apartment and he can't find her anywhere. He sees engagement photos and he sees, you know, their wedding date, but he can't seem to find her. He finds her computer and ends up trying to see if there's any way that he can find her, maybe where she went, things of that nature. Nia comes back to James a little shaken up and talking about the incident at the pizza parlor. James is 100% agreeing with Nia talking about, you know, we've been having a lot more incidences, incidences like this around the city and it's not right. And so we have to show both sides. We have to remain neutral here at CatCo. Nia is just really just, she wants James to go ahead and write a statement about this, which will actually put, you know, CatCo on his side. And James says he wants to remain neutral. And Nia goes into a heartfelt speech about how, you know, we have to stand up to these bullies, you know, talks about how she's transgendered and how she can no longer stand by and just let things happen. She she realized she has to fight and she has to stand up for what's right. And James, you know, thanks for her truth. But in that same token, he's like, but this is like a big old company. We, we have to remain neutral the whole time, even though he does agree that they do need to make a statement of sorts, which is why they're reporting on everything that's happening. We are back at the DEO and Brainy is there with all his pieces and he tells director Danvers that the only way that Mercy Graves is able to hack the image inducers is by actually going into L Corp right now. And he realizes the probability of her being there now is probably high. Ironically enough, that's where Mercy goes and Kara Danvers and of course, Lena are all in L Corp right now and the system goes off and guess who's there? Mercy. Mercy worked with L Corp in the past. She's very familiar. Heck, she was sleeping with the boss at one point. So. She has everything she needs to get in and get out. She uses Sonics to get past all the security, all the guards and whatnot. She's walking in, Lena hears a sound and she recognizes it from the, from the floor that she is. She tells Kara and she's like, look, these are Sonics they're dealing with. We have to put these in, we have to go. Kara is not able to change into Supergirl because she is literally being babysat by Lena. It's funny because Director Danvers nearly blows Supergirl's cover by, you know, messaging, you know, Kara saying, hey, hey, um, Supergirl, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? As they're trying to get away and try to stop this, this attack. And, you know, Lena is, I think she's starting to figure out or at least suspect that Kara might be Supergirl. They are trying to get away from the gunmen and all the while, Kara is starting to do things, you know, she's trying to, she's blocking bullets, like, subtly. She is, you know sneezing to create a gust to try to get the villains away from them as they're going through doors and doors. And Lena and Kara end up running into Mercy, who has one of Lillian's bodysuit guns from her suit. And her suit is similar to um, Lex's suit, but of course it's a little bit different. And she's talking to Lena, talking about how smart she is, how she was always the smarter of Lex and Lena, and how she should side with her and you know, Lena's so smart, she ends up getting one of the other guns and kind of attacking Mercy. So now you have Mercy and Lena trying to fight each other. And this is the opportunity Kara gets to go ahead and leave because Lena's like, look, leave, I'll take care of this, go. And so as soon as Kara leaves, Supergirl can jump into action. Now, Lena's like, I'm not sure how you got by security, but I'm glad you're here. Now we have Otis and Mercy in the custody of the DE. his view, even though we know from earlier because of the fight that got broken up between um, him and another character. Mercy is talking about, I bet you probably thought there'd be more aliens in here rather than human. And the dude's like, and then Jensen's like, you know, oh, I'm here to protect aliens and humans alike. And Mercy and Otis kind of tag team him and just say like, hey, well, you know what? Right now you're really working for the enemy. And Jensen just kind of like thinking because he already thought that. And as they're talking, she. Um, Mercy kind of just says, well, you know, the president had an oath, but she was an alien. She lied. Brainy is really shaken up about the whole pizza parlor incident, more so because he thought he had a friend. He had friends over there and he has a really nice moment with director Danvers. He just talks about how, and this time he understands there was a little bit of 
a problem, but he didn't think it'd be this big of an issue. And you know, he just said how it hurt. And you know, Director Damaris like showed like she supports him and that if anyone gives him an issue, send him her way. And I thought that was really nice. And it kind of plays on their relationship a lot more. They are starting to become friends. And around the end of the episode, Supergirl gives a speech about tolerance and how we should be loving each other. And you know, alien and human, we should all be friends. All the while, we see a clip of Jimmy Olsen going ahead and writing his statement from CatCo. And we get a couple other clips too. Did I say that Jensen is looking intently at Brainy? And I'm thinking like, um, you good, Famalong? And he's just looking like, ugh. Brainy's just looking like, watching the screen because Supergirl's giving the speech and everybody at the DEO is watching the speech. And he's just looking like, ugh. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, you are piercing him with your not supervision, dude. Chill out. And of course, Supergirl speaks to the president. She tells him that she does support him. And he hope and she hopes that he does a very good job. Of course, with all that evil looking Jensen was doing, he was gonna let Mercy and Otis go. I knew that from jumping. As soon as I saw him looking like he's either gonna attack, I thought he was gonna attack Brainy the way they cut the clip. I'm like, did he attack Brainy? No, 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 no. He went to go let them go. And Jensen used a hologram to make it look like Otis and Mercy were still there. They weren't. Of course, Danvers saw through the, the hologram because like the loop was kind of messed up. And then by that time, it was already too late. John goes to a rally led by the Agent of Liberty, and he's talking about how you all want jobs, but the aliens are taking your jobs, blase, blase, blase. Kind of that whole rhetoric right there. And near the end of the episode, the true end, you see Mercy, Otis, and yes, even Agent Jensen working on this device, the device they use for the Daxamites, I believe it was because instead of lead, Mercy ends up putting a little bit of kryptonite. And while Supergirl is flying, she's affected by this. And that's where the episode cuts. This is a good episode. I'm waiting to see what happens next. I really want a little bit more action. And now we're, we're gonna be jumping more into that because there's gonna be more fights because aliens are gonna be you know persecuted. So you're probably gonna see some more cool powers. I'm anxious to see how Supergirl is going to handle all this. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Out.